By his own admission, the Floyd Little we've admired for decades was not the teenager who grew up in New Haven, Connecticut. The one kicked out of school and fortunate to be re-enrolled. I remember being a strong but angry young man in school, Floyd said. But he sure got his act together. Elected class president, he went on to college football glory at Syracuse after spurning General Douglas MacArthur's West Point Hail Mary earned a law degree in Denver, where he's an immortalized Bronco, became a published author, owned a West Coast car dealership, before coming home again as an SU administrator. All of the times when I started out as the athletic director at Syracuse, where I would call on you to come and help me and come watch the program and talk about vision and those type of things, to the point we did it so much where I hired you and brought you to be my ambassador, and you're the best one I've ever had. All of which brings us to this evening in Syracuse. It would not, could not have included Floyd Douglas Little if not for one Ernest Radford Davis. Imagine a teenager out of Hill House in Bordentown Military, invited to the Waldorf Astoria. He meets the old soldier, who didn't just fade away, but is recruiting him to play for Army. Little had previously met Ernie Davis when the Heisman Trophy winner and coach Ben Schwartzwalder appeared at Floyd's home on a wintry December day. The Elmira Express wanted Little to be another great SU number 44. The next month, Ernie phoned Floyd. Army and Notre Dame were still hot on Floyd's trail, but Floyd promised Ernie it would be SU. Leukemia claimed Ernie soon thereafter, and Floyd knew a promise made is a promise kept. The 5'10", 196-pound bow-legged tailback was a three-time All-American who filled SU's record books while teaming with running backs named Zonka, Nance, and Coughlin. In 1967, he was the sixth pick in the first common AFL-NFL draft. In 1971, he was the smallest back to lead the NFL in rushing since World War II. In nine seasons, all as Broncos captain, the franchise gained more than 12,000 all-purpose yards, was all AFL in 1969, and an AFL-NFL Pro Bowler in 70, 71, and 73. Athletic Administrator Herm Frazier, a former Olympic sprinter, came to work at SU in August 2011, just after Little. And I came to work every day for about five or six days, and I never saw Floyd. And then finally, Floyd showed up one day, and I go, does this guy ever come to work? But he had been at the Hall of Fame festivities for the year of 2011. Jeff Rubin is an SU professor who also works for the athletic department. His passion for Syracuse, not just Syracuse University, not just Syracuse athletics, but Syracuse and the youth in helping pro athletes. Most don't come back to Syracuse. And, and Floyd, it was, a, it was a dream. As a fabled 44, Floyd's three-year varsity stats are among the best ever on the hill. And he's received 19 professional athlete awards, 31 community service awards, the 1992 NCAA Silver Anniversary Award, enshrinement in seven halls of fame, including college and pro football, and Denver's inaugural Ring of Fame. In New Haven, they renamed the Athletic Center the Floyd Little Athletic Center, New England's largest scholastic indoor athletic space. In essence, Floyd Little's character, leadership, and perseverance is the reason his name is embroidered on this esteemed athletic center. Lest we forget, when SU football was caught up in racial strife nearly 50 years ago, the number 44 who rightly supported Coach Ben was Floyd Little. Floyd has tried to live the life Ernie Davis could not, to live the words of poet Robert Frost, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. Floyd and his wife Deborah live in Las Vegas, but they're back home tonight. So now Floyd Little, his long ago promise made and kept without regret, becomes a member of the Greater Syracuse Sports Hall of Fame class of 2019.